Welcome back to the program. With me now, our panel, David Gazard from DPG Advisory, a former Liberal advisor, and Ben Oquist, Executive Director of the Australia Institute, former Greens advisor. David, the rate rise this week comes just uh, less than three weeks from Election Day. What sort of impact will it have to the campaign? I think everyone who's got borrowings will be suddenly more sensitised to the issue of uh, the rate uh, and the whole, the, the whole um, best manager of the economy suddenly comes back squarely into frame. So it, it's easy to think about switching your vote when, uh, when economic times are good. I think that's been the, uh, the, the history of this. I remember in 2007 when John Howard lost, things were going really well. People felt they could make a change on a range of other reasons, but suddenly in the hierarchy of uh, political concerns, you've, you've got the economy front and centre again, I, and I, I think the rate rise will, will sensitise a lot of people to that. Ben Oquist, with the inflation number, then the rate rise, is this a scenario where, as David says, almost counterintuitively, it could benefit the incumbent? Well, I think that's what the Prime Minister is hoping, and I think essentially he's trying to make the best of a bad lot. He, he had a good first week of the campaign, Albo had a, a terrible one. But since then, the, probably, the, the running's probably been in Labor's failure, uh, in Labor's favour. Uh, we had the announcement from the Solomons, which kind of put the Prime Minister on the back foot on his supposed strength, national security. Then we had the inflation rate, and then we had the interest rate rise, which I think put him on the back foot on the economy and played into the opposition's hands of their cost of living campaign. Now, the Prime Minister is going to make the best of a bad lot, and as uh, David says, try to turn it on well, in these uncertain economic times, uh, don't risk things. But uh, you'd have to say that at the moment, as I read it, uh, Labor's in front and uh, the path to a Morrison majority government is not there at the moment. Now, there's 17 sleeps to go, but uh, essentially polling has already started. Postal votes are out there. Uh, the pre-polls will hit on Monday and he's got a lot of ground to make up. Just Looking at the seat count, I think you know most people are giving Labor kind of ahead in five seats across Western Australia, South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales. The coalition competitive to win back a couple, maybe. Uh, and then the big surprise of the campaign, um, the high performance of the independents and the Prime Minister himself warning today of a cavalcade of independents. I think that all leads you at this stage to say that the government is behind and their key themes of national security and the economy haven't played out in the way that they've wanted. Now, the Prime Minister is a good campaigner um, and he can turn that around, but uh, he's behind at the moment. And that's with two and a half weeks to go, as Ben alluded to there, David, the, the teal independent movement continues uh, with some momentum. Tomorrow we've got an, an interesting People's Forum coming up in Kuyong with the Treasurer and his opponent, Monique Ryan. I think an important moment in the campaign for that particular seat, which has got a, a lot of money going into it, David. Um, look, you know, that it will be an interesting debate and, uh, you know, I'm interested that that Ben, you know, once again sort of declared the economy not that important and Labor's in front. You know, I think, I think this happened in the last campaign, as I recall, all, all the way through to, to polling day and, and we know what happened there. Look, I, I think, you know, this is exactly what I was just saying to you, Kieran. Um, if you're Monique Ryan, you, your world has changed, particularly in Kuyong. You, you've been a single-issue campaigner running around beating the drum on, 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 on climate. But suddenly you've got, uh, which is important, and, and, and both parties have sort of addressed that. Josh certainly has. Um, but suddenly you've now got people in that seat who are starting to think, well, I've got to start thinking about my, my, my home loan. I've got to start thinking about um, my, my, my business. Um, these businesses have been smashed by COVID. We've come through a really difficult time. Um, and, of course, the, the, the big thing here that, that has changed in, in this cycle is that the, the, the pressures we've seen ha have come almost exclusively from overseas. So we, we've had COVID, uh, we've got instability in China, we've got supply chain issues, and, and of course, we've got Russia. Uh, no one could have predicted that. So people are starting to think, well, hang on, this is an uncertain future here. Um, 
we, we're at the start of a, a rate cycle that is going up. Who's going to be best to manage these, the, these issues? Now, you know, it's of no surprise to me that, that, that Ben comes out and says, well, the Labor Party's got its nose in front. They, they well may have their nose in front at this stage. But, but my argument um, here to you today is that, that that's fundamentally changed with the inflation numbers and the rate hike. So once people get past that sort of sticker shock of going, oh, gee, we're really unhappy about rates going up again, they're going to start to focus on who's best to manage the drivers of the economy. And that's in an equity position that the coalition usually holds with a very, very clear advantage because of its track record on, on managing the economy. Josh Frydenberg, with his campaign to hold on to Kuyong, Ben, with some interesting uh, uh, billboards, placards, however you want to describe it, saying, keep Josh. Uh, no reference to the Liberal Party, just keep Josh. Um, he remains popular there, mm. but he, the polling apparently is very, very close. I think all the signs are that across the six seats from uh, Curtin in Western Australia and Kooyong and Goldstein and North Sydney and uh, McKellar and Wentworth, uh, the amount of money being spent by the Liberal Party, all the published uh, polls, all the word on the ground, the fact that uh, the Treasurer has had to shift his message shows that all those seats are competitive. And I, I think that's the, the real dilemma now for the Coalition, that the Prime Minister's message sometimes is at odds with a message that will help the Coalition keep those teal seats. Um, if he rails against the ABC or if he rails against uh, activists against coal, if he uh, sends out those kind of messages, which he's wont to do, it doesn't play well in those teal seats. And essentially the Coalition has got that... Uh, it, it's wedged. And I think the, the Treasurer's change in message um, shows, shows that uh, and shows that currently it's not working. Now, I think at least one of those seats will fall. Um, the question is how many of them will fall. And I think that makes a major majority coalition government very difficult at a time when the economic debate has shifted. And it's not just about abstract notions of economic management, it's kitchen table economics that tends to favour the Labor Party. And it's run for a long time, the problem of low wage growth. And of course, low real wage growth is now high on the agenda with the high inflation figure. So I think that's probably changing the nature of the debate about the economy. We had the first debate, of course, a couple of weeks ago now in, in Brisbane, uh, here on Sky News and in conjunction with the Courier-Mail, and then now we've got two within a, a three or four days, Sunday, and I think that the other one's next Wednesday, David Gazard. So a chance in the last fortnight for the Prime Minister to try and uh, take a bit of pain off Anthony Albanese, as, as Ben said, he had a shocking start, but he's regrouped. Is it... <laughs> These are high-stake events. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, although, you know, I mean, I'm never quite sure how how much faith you put in into um, in, into debates. Uh, John Howard once famously said that he he won, you know, 12 years of of government and lost every debate, according to the media. So, you know, there's they, they're probably somewhat limited unless someone scores a, an absolute haymaker. Um, but I, I, I tell you, I, I think for the debate with Monique Ryan, she's got to start thinking about what her economic policies are going to be, what her security policies are going to be in, in what is a, a radically reshaped backdrop to, uh, to the campaign. The other thing I'd say is, you know, this has been a six-week campaign and, and you know, the, the hesitations around the opposition leader were established early on in the campaign around economic management... Um, it, the, the last weeks of the campaign are important when people start to switch on again. You, you, we'd all like to think everyone's fascinated with everything that happens in between, but people, you know, 13 yeah. per cent of voters at the last election made up their mind in the polling booth. So you've got 25 per cent of seats now with undecided voters. You know, I'm, I'm not prepared to, to stake anything and, and go out like, like, like Ben. I, I disagree with him on that. Um, I, I think this is still all there to be won. And I think we've now seen a, a massive shift in the, in the environment around uh, the things that move people's votes, particularly undecided voters. David and Ben, I, I appreciate your time today. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to you soon. I'm sorry, Ben, we're out of time. We've got to get to uh, a couple of other things. But don't...